Hi all, and welcome to the session, how one door used display ad campaigns to power a marketing influence pipeline. I'm Narosha Methananda, the VP of Marketing at Influ2, and I'm joined by Ken Kupstein, the Director of Marketing from One Door. Welcome, Ken. Hey, thank you, Narosha. I appreciate the opportunity to join you today. So a little bit of background about One Door. Uh, we're the leading provider of cloud-based visual merchandising software. And our mission is to help retailers transform how they plan, execute, and analyze their in-store merchandising. And we do this with our cloud-based platform called Merchandising Cloud. And our customers include Best Buy, T-Mobile, and Woolworths out of Australia. Awesome. Well, that's um, close to my heart. If you can't tell from my accent, I'm Australian. Um, so thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Ken. Um, and also just to share a little bit about Influ2, um, at the base level, Influ2 takes your digital advertising out of its black box to be able to help you target uh, the buying groups and key decision makers that you that you want to target and gives you back tangible, uh, tangible results from that to be able to action. So, but Ken's going to take us through that. Um, we have, I know that he has a lot to share, so let's jump right in. Um, you know, Ken, I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about One Door's challenge with its ABM program and what the impetus was to use Influ2. Yeah, absolutely. So a few years back, we conducted a deep dive into our personas and found that on average, our buying group consisted of about 15 to 20 people at each company. And our target accounts are large retail stores like grocery, drugs, specialty, and big box. Within those buying groups, we have key personas that are primarily HQ based, and they work in either space planning, visual merchandising, or store operations. And their responsibilities range from either optimizing product assortments, so ensuring the right product is on the right shelf in the right store, to creating visual merchandising displays, to working with the store teams to execute on those product and promotional plans. Initially, we were spending media dollars on account-based ad platforms, and we're generally getting a high volume of clicks and traffic to our site, and that's great, right? However, the data could not confirm if we were connecting with our personas or really just anyone from a target account, and, and to us, that was kind of a waste of, of media dollars. We had spent considerable time building out our database, so we knew who we had to target. And because we're an enterprise software, we're talking about a, a pretty long sales cycle. Mm -hmm. And so we need to sustain our budget. So we had to find a way to bring prospects into the funnel and stay engaged with them throughout the journey. Right. So you really needed to be more focused. And, you know, it'd be great if you could take us through how Influ2 has helped One Door uh, with this challenge. Yeah, so one of our challenges is, look, we don't have a big sales team, so we need to be laser focused on the accounts in our ABM group. And tracking who is engaged with our ads is, is really a critical component of our ABM strategy. And if you want to digitally engage with a specific individual, there's only a couple of ways to do this. One, you can send emails to market automation. However, what we're finding is there are a lot of false clicks you can't really confirm if the recipient or some corporate software program is opening your email. Mm -hmm. And second, you can send in mail using LinkedIn, which is great, but whether someone has opened the email, there is no reporting to confirm this. So our ad agency, Con Creative, recommended Influ2 because of its first person marketing capabilities. And so we started running ads on Influ2 in spring of 2020. And we know, what I like about it is we know when a person has clicked an ad, how many impressions they've been served, what pages they have visited, as well as providing us with an engagement score to benchmark against others. So at the end of the day, we can confirm who has seen and engaged with our brand. Cool, and so you know, how did this tie back in terms of your ICP research and how did you, you marry that up? Yeah, so it ties back to our ICP research. Um, well, we just established about three to five personas in each buying group with different goals and pain points. And for our first campaign, we developed a series of persona specific ads. And the goal was to drive our personas to landing pages that are most relevant to them. So for us to date, the biggest success that we have had with Influ2 was a campaign targeting Walgreens, a large drug chain. And we were much more specific in the creative and really by simply adding in their name 
to the existing headlines, the click-through rate increased to 1.1 versus our average of 0.25. And so this was, this was amazing. We were like, whoa, this works. Um, we got to do more of this. And so we started to focus more on that kind of advertising against accounts who are demonstrating interest in our type of technology. So for us, when we talk about kind of personalizing ads, um, efforts like that are, don't take a lot of work, but yield huge results. Right. Cool. And in terms of the results, you know, um, and, the, and the persona engagement with specific content, um, you know, have you learned anything more through this process and this approach? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we were talking about this the other day. It's interesting. Two of our personas mm-hmm. are, are relatively active online and their behavior, be it clicks or downloads, are, are fairly similar. However, one of our personas, it seems, spends less time online. And this has impacted our ability to connect with them. So, you know, driving results, getting engagement. So to compensate, what we've had to do is really have our BDR focus more efforts against that persona group with one-to-one. And that's helping us, but it's, you know, it's that type of insight that you look at and say, okay, people are really very much different. And you can tell by, you know, the departments that they're in, it's just mm-hmm. their behaviors. And so having that insight allows us to kind of pivot and make adjustments along the way. Right. Yeah, that's that's really cool in, in terms of, and I know we were talking about this, uh, in terms of this approach being able to help validate some of your research because, you know, you sort of go and do this research and it's all all very very well and good, but then you get into the real world and you're able to make adjustments from that. So I think that that's super interesting um, to see that. Um, and then I know also when we were initially chatting um, you know, you had a bit of an aversion to targeting through social media. You, you heard that Influ2 um, really utilizes Facebook and Instagram as, as one of our advertising channels. You know, and I think this tends to be a common bias in B2B. I mean, I have, <laughs> I have this bias myself as well. You know, I had this bias because you, you sort of tend to associate uh, those, those social media platforms with being more B2C. But, you know, can you tell us a little bit more about your aversion and what you've learned about this and, and what your experience has been? Yeah, for sure. And and I think you know, a lot of people probably have the same kind of reaction is when you're in B2B, your expectation that is if you want to reach your audience, you have to go to LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is great. Um, and so when I found out that Influ2's network included Facebook, we weren't that sure that it was the right channel for us. Um, and it wasn't until a couple of months in when we started to do a little bit of research um, with Com Creative, we found that Facebook was actually a key channel for most of our target audience. And if you think about our personas and where they go to spend their time, Mm -hmm. um, Facebook is still their go-to social channel. And so what we've been able to see is more engagement coming from Facebook. And as you're gonna share some of the the other campaigns that we've created, the type of content that we've created is ideal for Facebook. And so in addition to, you know, Info2 on the Facebook network, we started to do kind of up our game in improving our kind of Facebook page um, because we what we're seeing is there is activity and there's a, a, an opportunity to go there. Right, right. And yeah, I mean, this is one of the things and I think, you know, you made a really pertinent point, um, you know, when we were preparing is about being where your audience is and being relevant to, to what their needs are. And, um, you know, I think this is something uh, that, it often gets confused. I think relevance gets confused with personalization and customization, um, you know, which can be really polarizing because it sort of skirts the line of, of being creepy. But I think the other thing to sort of remember here is, um, you know, some of the channels that we typically think of as B2B marketers, they are, um, you know, chock-a-block full of mm-hmm. all different content. So you're, you're actually um, opening opening up yourself and your attention and, and your uh, brand to uh, channels where people actually have perhaps a bit more attention span, or and it's not as saturated. So I think that was that was a really interesting point that I that I took away from 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 what we've been talking about. Um, you know, but as you said, it's it's been about understanding your user and, and knowing what's going to appeal to them and applying these insights in a mindful way. Um, and that's something we've discussed at length. And so I think we have a special guest who wants to have you say, you know, before we kick off into this topic. So let's hear from him. Big Brother Greg from the Brady Bunch with a message from the Gregster for one door. Now, this is far out. 
I hear that one door is retiring the paper planogram. Is that out of sight or what? Well, that was pretty cool. Can you tell us a little bit about, <laughs> about yeah. that? Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into that. You know, uh, Barry Williams, Greg Brady from the Brady Bunch, um, you know, 1970s. It's part of this campaign that we created. And what I wanted to start off with was that, you know, while Inflitu takes responsibility for the science part of advertising by helping identify key decision makers and then getting the ads in front of them, you know, the art of advertising is still up to the brand. And our feeling is that B2B advertising should not be cold or sterile. It should inspire and, and really connect with people on an emotional level. Even though you're, not, you're, you're, you're still selling software, you're still advertising to people and people have emotions. So for us, a good example of this is our most recent campaign, which you have up on the screen, Retire the Paper Planogram. And that transports the audience back to the 1970s, the origins of the paper planogram to establish that the current merchandising process that retailers are using today is widely outdated and it's time for change. So it, what we did in our research found out that the paper planogram, not getting into too much detail, but that's really the, the map that stores use to identify where products need to go on, on a shelf. And, and this technology was invented in the 70s by, the, um, by Kmart. And so where's Kmart today? And so this technology is still being used and we thought, my God, it's, it's, it's 2021, like this thing is 50 years old, it's time to retire. And, and so an idea just kind of blossomed into this kind of holistic campaign and it's, it's been terrific. Yeah, I know. I, I, gosh, I can't believe the 70s is 50 years ago. <laughs> it gave me a little bit of a reality check. Um, but look, I love this. Uh, you know, I loved it when you when you were talking about it, when you showed it to me. And we, I know we, we could have spent probably the whole session talking about this campaign. And we couldn't really showcase it. But what I really love is how you've taken like this information and data that you that you've learned about this data point and being able to really transform it into this holistic approach and bringing to life the 70s through these various mediums and really cemented the messaging. Um, you know, can you can you tell us a little bit more about how about the campaign results and what you learned from sure. this? So it's, it's really amazing creative. And our creative team developed visuals around iconic 70s memorabilia. So you saw a fondue and an eight track set. Um, what's really fun is that the day we launched, we got a phone call from someone at Claire's Accessories saying, we just saw the campaign, it's brilliant. We're in the midst of digitizing our process, let's talk. And responses like this just confirm that your creative is spot on. And it's it was just a great way to kind of set forth this this new campaign and so a little bit as you know where we are today so as the campaign progressed we found that downloads and demo requests were trailing off and we think it was because that the the creative concept wasn't broadly understood by our target audience and there's some reasons for that that i'll get into but this highlighted to us the importance of balancing creative execution with ads that are you know, again, it's B2B, so more offer-driven, um, include product shots. And sometimes I think we overthink it, that the person who's viewing the ad only has two seconds to look at it. That's it. And so either they get it or they don't. And just because, you know, from the our side of it, we're looking at these ads for a long time. We think they're amazing. Um, you know, something's got to pull them in and make them click to the landing page. And if your page is set up right, then you will effectively guide them to a desired action, be it a download or a demo request. And now the harsh reality for all of us is that, that everyone is not in the market for your product at the same time. And when you decide to advertise, you know, if someone's not clicking on, it doesn't necessarily mean that you know, something's not working or the messaging is off. It's, it's just, they're not ready. They don't need to, to click. They're not doing any research. So in this instance, for us, um, building long-lasting brand awareness is key, and we have certainly accomplished this with the Retire Paper Planogram campaign. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, look, I think it's really important to highlight here as well that this, you know, this has been running for one quarter, and these are results from one quarter compared to a previous quarter. So I think from a campaign life perspective, it's a relatively short time in terms of measuring measuring the results. Um, and I think you're absolutely right in terms of, um, 
you know, when people are in market, because all of your accounts, I think if one thing that we've learned through the ABM journey is that not all of your accounts are in market at all the same time, especially, you know, if you provide the context with with one door that you are an enterprise grade software and, um, you know, it's it, the sales cycle is quite long and it's quite an investment in terms of uh, making that decision. And I, I know from our, our discussions, it's not one that's easy easily uh, changed very quickly in terms of churn. So, you know, I think, um, you know, that's a, su that's a super important point to remember. And I think sometimes that gets lost when, um, when you're looking at the bottom line marketing results or, or what happens, being able to give yourself like that, uh, an understanding of what the other factors are um, that may be impacting results as well. Um, so, you know, Transitioning us to results and measurement, I, I'd really like to dive a little bit deeper. Um, you know, selfishly for Influ2, I love that you've coined this new term, which you, you which you know came up during our discussions of Influ2 clickers. Um, so, can you tell us a little bit more about these and the overall results of your ABM program and the impact that Influ2 um, has had? So I go into the Influ2 dashboard probably several times a day just to see who's clicked. And I love that I can see which creative is resonating and the level of engagement at an individual level. And for me, it's great to share what we call the Influ2 clickers, the target accounts who have clicked our ads. And we do this at our weekly go-to-market meetings and work with our BDRs and sales team on mapping out next steps of engagement. And here's the best part is you know, every lead is qualified because we handpick them. So there's none of that kind of back and forth about, is this a good lead? It's, hey, we all wanted to get this person and now we have that person. And it's allowed us to demonstrate to sales who and where we are seeing interest and engagement. And when we share these in for two clickers, there's this, this excitement around like, who clicked this week? Mm -hmm. um, this visibility has, has definitely enabled us to better align our ABM strategy and is helping our sales connect with our key decision makers just much more quickly. Because we know like if they're clicking an ad on Monday, we make a call on a Wednesday, they're still kind of aware of what we're talking about. There isn't that like a two week delay here. Um, and so one thing that I thought was really interesting that I wanted to share was that our, our monthly branded searches have increased by 66%. And to me, that's highlighting the progress and impact we are making on the business. And overall, the campaign has been successful and we've increased our market and qualified requests by by 62 percent year over year. So that is for us, that's fantastic. Yeah, no, I think that that's that there are very solid results. And I, I also would like to point out that, you know, hopefully Influ2 has had some <laughs> had some hand in quite selfishly uh, increasing the the uh, the the percentage of um, branded searches because you brought us on about a year ago and I love to see how that that's increased as well. So hopefully we've had some influence on that. You have, if, if you didn't, I probably wouldn't be talking with you today. So <laughs> it's been a big part of, you know, kind of our success and our ability to identify folks that we're going after and, and we're connecting with them. So that's what ABM is supposed to do. And we feel like we're, we're creating a playbook that that's working for us. Awesome. And yeah, I know that, you know, the other thing, it's not, it's not, not everything's a silver bullet. You have, um, you know, so many different platforms that you're using. And the other thing is, it's really about tying back the marketing and sales results together. And I know that you've done some, and I, I sort of advanced the slide accidentally, but I know you've been doing some fantastic work on um, bringing all these results together. Can you share a little bit more about this? Yeah, Absolutely. And I can't take any credit for, for the work that you're showing on the stage. Um, what you're looking at is this amazing kind of unified funnel that our friends at B2B Fusion and a person on my team, Jen Chewy, have been working on. And this kind of unified sales funnel is pulling into Salesforce. And it's a dashboard that they created that gives us a really robust view of what's working, what's not. And it's designed to easily provide our senior leadership time with an executive summary. So for a lot of folks, you know, like that whole end of the month or beginning of the month, and you got to pull all the results together and you go into different sources and, and you're still not sure, you know, with confidence, are you presenting the right data to your executive team? This dashboard is very easy for us to follow and it's accurate. Um, the most insightful part of this is being able to understand 
and analyze the qualified leads. And I think from this, we realize though, that we, we easily get a lot of downloads through paid search. And I'm sure many of the people out in the audience find that often few of these fall into your, your ICP. And so what we're doing is our strategy has just been readjusting um, our spend and put it into tactics where we know we can hit the people that we want to. And, and of course, Influ2 is a, is a big part of that strategy. Um, we're also using Influ2 as a testing ground for ads where we can gauge the messaging and offers. And what's really neat is that we can make changes rather quickly. So it's allowing us not just, you know, character connecting one-on-one, but it's, it's a testing ground for us. Um, we have a lot of control visibility into the dashboard that if something's just not working, we're not going to kind of let it go. It's feel fast and correct it. So that's what we're doing. Um, but at the end of it all, you know, we're taking a very focused approach to account-based marketing. Um, Influ2 is a big part of it. And I would say that, you know, overall, all the things that we're doing has helped us as a marketing team um, influence about 70% of our year-to-date revenue. Right. Wow. That's that's uh, amazing to be able to have that result. And also just I imagine with the with the unified funnel, like it really helps in terms of um, helping with that workflow and connecting the dots with the, re, you know, the results you're having through your campaigns and being able to make sure sales has visibility of it and actioning that um, through through in Salesforce, where I assume that the, the majority of them are working. Is that? Correct. Yeah. That's yeah. Correct. Yeah, that that's brilliant. Um, and look, I, you know, thank you so much for sharing this, Ken. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm going to throw you a wild card. Um, you know, through this process, obviously, you know, it there are always ups and downs. You know, what what have you learned um, through this that you can advise, um, you know, our audience today? Things that they should look out for and be mindful of if they're going to take this approach as as you've done at One Door. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's being a little bit patient. I think there's a lot of groundwork that has to be done up front um, mm-hmm. of identifying the individuals and really understanding, you know, we talk about pain points and their challenges and understanding what that really translates to in terms of the, the creative aspect of it all um, is really important because at the end of the day, like I said, you get two seconds and we've learned, you know, some good, some bad that, if that messaging isn't, you know, really hitting them and pulling them in, it, it's it's just not going to work for you. Um, right. I also think that it's really important. And what we've learned is got to rotate the creative a lot more frequently. I think one of the things that that we relied on with the retire campaign was that we, you know, we love the creative. We thought it was amazing. Um, but like I said, um, the messaging was probably not broadly understood. It was like, retire the paper planograms and it was an eight track a set. And so in this kind of B2B space, we weren't giving people a balance of like a product shot or an e-guide for them to say, okay, I'm making a connection. And so that's the other thing that we're learning is, you know, creative has to be rotated more frequently. And one way that we do that is we use the dashboard to look at the impressions. So like if someone has hit, you know, served up 100 impressions and they haven't clicked an ad, I, I don't think impression 101 is going to do it for you, um, that we need to kind of change up the message and try to understand what's happening. In other instances, we see, you know, someone served up three impressions and they clicked an ad and they were hanging out on the landing page and they downloaded something like, to me, that's better than any sort of like intense signal. Like someone saw the ad, jumped on it, and it's our job to quickly connect with that person and, and create some dialogue. And so that's that's what we're learning. Um, you know, we're going up for, for Q4 and a main event in, in January. So we'll be exploring kind of ways to evolve our retire campaign. Um, but more importantly, with Influ2, now's our opportunity to start developing more mid-funnel ads. And what does that mean? Because so much of, of what we've been doing with Influ2 is looking at it as a build awareness top of funnel. And so, what do you do when you know there are people that have clicked on your ads a couple of times? They know who you are. They seem interested. Now we need to try to get into their heads a little bit of, of like, okay, where are they in their journey? And what messaging can we send to them so that it brings them in? Because um, ultimately what we want them to do is, you know, connect with a salesperson or BDR or even better, you know, fill out that demo request form field. Um, and once we do that, then, 
you know, we're onto a very different stage with that person. Right. Yeah, I think that's that's something that, um, you know, we've certainly been trying to communicate in terms of you, you think about display advertising as very top of funnel and being able to drive the leads in. But actually, you know, the utility of it is is beyond that in being able to support um, sales efforts and align with them and to be able to, to communicate about more content. Um, but you have to be able to know where they are in that journey um, and where they are with you and be able to reach them as well. So, you know, I guess that's one of our key key differentiators. But I'm, sure. I'm really super keen to see, um, you know, how that turns out. And I would I'd love to hear about that when that when that happens. Um, so, look, I, I think um, we're at the end with the end of the, our presentation. So, Ken, thank you so much for, for joining us you know, for, for sharing um, what you've been doing and being so generous with, with sharing as well um, and with your results and, and so on and so forth. Um, and to, to, um, to the audience, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we hope you found this session useful. Um, both uh, my details and Ken's details are on the slide here. So if you have any additional questions, feel free to reach out to us. Um, but we wish you uh, a lovely rest of your conference.